you're doing in-house videos to help your company make more money and more sales, you don't need to waste time learning all kinds of filming techniques like the stuff they teach in film school. Today, I'll show you how to use a simple still picture and make it look like an impressive high quality video effect. Hey, I'm Larry and what I have to show you today you might have already heard of, and I'll show you how incredibly easy it is to do in editing. There's a world-renowned documentary filmmaker named Ken Burns who did countless historical documentaries, and obviously his visual library was generally just artifacts and historical photos. He became famous for the filming technique when he filmed photos as he panned slowly across these images. He gave movement to still images. So when you consider human psychology, this is actually brilliant. With the fast-paced constant movement in videos these days, creators are taking advantage of the natural human instinct to pay attention to things that are moving. Not to mention that video consumers all expect all kinds of movement these days. So when something is standing still, it's easier to ignore. With video editing programs these days, this is incredibly easy. Just drop in a still photo and with a couple of clicks, you can give your still pictures motion and you keep people much more engaged throughout your video. And one more reason still pictures with a little motion are great is because your audience will get bored just watching a person on camera all the time. You gotta break things up. Dropping in a picture is a good way to go. For my example, I'll show you how easy it is to use my favorite video editing program. It's called ScreenFlow on the Mac. Keep in mind, pretty much any video editing application can do this. All right, so here we are starting out on my Mac desktop. Pretty straightforward stuff going on here. We're going to launch the ScreenFlow application and get into a video. It's already partway through editing. But the thing that I want to do is add to this video this image of the Canon Vixia. It's a little picture of JPEG of a Canon Vixia. So as we get over to the application, don't worry if it's a little intimidating with respect to the interface, because if you're brand new to video editing, it's going to look a little overwhelming. Eh, a little. It's not that much going on here. There is a background music track. It's all kind of in a stack. There's a background music track here. This is, well, that's me on camera and my spoken dialogue. And this is this graphic. So those three items. And I'm going to move the timeline scrubber back to right around here. And again, we're looking at a zoomed in portion of a longer video. The video is like four minutes and 20 seconds. And we're looking at about a 10 or 15 second area along the timeline. But I'm going to hit the space bar and watch it play. Go ahead and use that kind of setup to get started if it's all you've got. But keep in mind, you could pick up a camcorder, a dedicated camera. All right, so right where I say you could pick up a camcorder, that's right around here. And so I'm going to move the timeline scrubber there. Up a camcorder. Right there. That's where I want the graphic to be added. So it's as easy as going out to the desktop, just drag it in. That's it. And you see it already appeared there. Now, the cool thing is it's a little bit too small. I'm just going to click on it and grab those handles, drag it out bigger. Put it back in the middle. There it is. Nice and big. One little problem. I can see the graphic that's going on behind there. I can see the, the existing video behind there, behind the graphic. I could take this into Photoshop and give it a 1920 by 1080 rectangular backdrop, but I don't want to do that. I run into this all the time where I bring in smaller photographs on a white backdrop and I just want to block out this. So watch what happens. I'm going to move this up one layer. And I'm going to bring in this graphic. This graphic is exactly what it says. It's a 1920 by 1080 white rectangle. That's all it is. I made it just for this purpose because I do this all the time. And you bring it in and see how it shows up. It's a white graphic, but it is kind of blocking out our existing picture of the Canon Vixia. So that's because of the stack, the layer stack. So you want it down below. So that's it. All right. So over here, we get this. I hit play or the space bar camcorder. A dead there we go. 
It's exactly what we need. Now, all we need to do is make this thing move over time. Let me slide to the right just a little bit so I can see what's going on. All right, so we need to make this thing move over time. Very, very straightforward. You click on the object that you want it to move. I want this to zoom in slowly over time. And I'm going to add an action. I'm in the video control panels. These are all the settings for this particular object. It's 212% as far as size. Remember, we brought it in and scaled it up nice and big. But the position is right in the middle. It has no rotation of any of the axes. And it's 100% opaque. That describes this graphic in numbers. But we're going to add the action, so I'm just going to click the action button. And down here, it gave me this little yellow thing. And this is the action. And whatever these settings are, when the timeline scrubber is on either side of this action, that determines what happens over time. Now, I can click and drag this thing around all I want. And I can also drag this around. But the problem is, all the settings here are the exact same as all the settings here. So what I need to do is I need to make it bigger. Because remember I said I want to zoom in over time. So I'm going to move the slider here. I'm going to make the scale just a bit bigger. That's a nice change. So let's see what it does here. Click. I'm going to hit the space bar and play. Dedicated camera, like a Canon. Okay, so that's good, but it zoomed in pretty darn quick. I don't like how fast it zoomed in. Well, that's easy. You click on the action, and you, you know I showed you you can move the action around. Well, you can also go to the edge of the action right here, click, hold, and drag, and you're dragging it out over time. And I'm going to go to the beginning, drag that out over time. So now I'm going to move the scrubber playhead over here. Uh, that little rectangle or that dotted line thing is there because this is highlighted. So I'm going to deselect it by clicking off of it. And now watch. I'm just going to hit the space bar and let it play. You could pick up a camcorder, a dedicated camera, like a Canon Vixia for $200 to $250. And there we go. And so it is a jump cut in. It like jumps to this thing and then it jumps back out. But I'm not going to show you transitions. That's not what this video is about. It's just about, hey, you can very easily drag and drop images into your timeline. And then by just adding an action to that item, you can make it move or change or grow over time. So one more time, watch what it does. Quarter, a dedicated camera like a Canon Vixia for $200 to $250. And that's so much more interesting to look at in a finished video than just a static still image. So you can see just how straightforward it is. Just dropping a photo into your timeline and adding a video action. Super easy. So what do you think? Are you going to add stills to your videos now? Comments and questions are welcome. Please subscribe if this kind of thing is helpful in your DIY video projects. And be sure to stop by LarryBecker.tv. I've got all kinds of great resources. Transcripts from my daily videos are on my blog. And I have complete classes at the site too.